It's been our experience that the most successful people are the ones that are really good at modeling, measuring plus one, model measure plus one. You know, people always talk about some of the people that are real successful, how if you measure things every day, that's where the growth can happen because you're honest with yourself and you'll be able to see exactly what's missing and exactly what's doing well and how to be able to kind of move through that and create your own process as a result of. So when it comes to money, money is not math. It's more of a commodity, meaning money is not four plus four, which equals eight. It's more like four times four, which equals 16. If you velocitize money, if you learn to do what the banks do, what will begin to happen, and it doesn't happen overnight, but what will begin to happen is you'll be able to compound your overall world, not just a product. So if I had a spaceship and I was in the back, it was in my backyard and I wanted to go to the moon, it's not a linear calculation because you've got to factor in that the, the moon is spinning around the Earth, right? The Earth is spinning, I think, 1,000 miles an hour. And at the end of the day, the rocket has to leave our atmosphere and take four days to get to Earth and then back. So that's not four plus four. There's all these different ingredients, these, all, these, all these different factors. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to your money. It's the same thing to understand everything works in circles, whether it's the universe, whether it's the solar system, whether it's an orbit. If you understand the speed of circles, and we call it velocity, the faster the velocity, the more you can stay ahead of taxes, inflation, and lost opportunity cost. And understanding this one concept will make you a millionaire, if not multi-millionaire. And we're going to talk a little bit about exactly how to position yourself to do that the right way. So listen, if you don't put any money away versus an accumulation mindset, then that's, ter like, that's terrible, right? If you just did an accumulation mindset versus nothing else, that's better than not putting any money away. But what exactly is an accumulation mindset? Who does it benefit on that list? And I'm sure once I explain this, you'll understand that you're not at the top of the list, you're at the bottom of the list but it's better than not saving any money at all. But let's get into what everybody does or what everybody's taught, which is an accumulation mindset, and it's rooted in scarcity. People who live with this mindset think and live by the phrase, a penny saved is a penny earned. They wait large amounts of time for compound interest to build, when, build them their wealth. While this can work, it tends to be slow for most people. So in other words, people from you know, 25 to 65 to put money to a 401k, and by the way, a 401k should be part of the overall planning, not the planning. But they put money into a 401k and IRA, it takes five, you know, earning five or ten percent a year, and it goes like this, and then eventually it starts to skyrocket in your mid to late fifties, right? But here's the challenge. You can create so much wealth between the age twenty between the age twenty-five and thirty-five, between thirty-five and forty-five. Why do you have to wait that long? Because this is what society tells you. Now, who does it benefit? Well, if you're the financial institutions, it benefits them. Why? Because you're giving them money on a regular and ongoing basis, right? Every single month, you put money into a 401k plan. Uh, the, the financial institution gets to put that on their books as assets under management, right? So they get leverage off of that in other areas. They hold it for as long as they can, meaning 59 and a half or beyond. Then they give you back the least amount as possible because if you had a $2 million 401k and you wanted to cash it in, you would owe 30 or 40% in taxes, so what are you going to do? You're going to take monthly distributions, right? So that's what retirement is, a retirement monthly distribution. Now, why wait all that time just to get taxed? Why not create wealth along the way? Yeah, that's going to be part of your tax buckets later on in life, no doubt about it. But why not be able to put yourself in a position to prosper and create that generational wealth and not expose yourself just to what the stock market does? Now, it's true that if you invest monthly and you do it year over year, and you're, you have proper planning and you don't get shook up when winter comes, you don't get shook when the winter comes, what will begin to happen is you'll create more and more money, but it'll be statement wealth. It's on that statement, statement wealth, right? So why, you can't leverage it unless it's after tax. So why not be able to have the statement wealth, but also other wealth along the way, and be able to create those multiple use of each and every dollar, which we're going to get into right now, which is the velocity of money, and we want you to have that mindset along the way. So you're going to see a lot of people on, on YouTube, and they're going to be screaming about cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, you, you, cash flow. All you hear is cash flow. That'll be a good mix for my guy Danny behind the camera. But cash flow is phenomenal. If, in fact, you do the right I dot and T crossing, being able to get cash flow is an incredible thing. Now, a lot of people, when they think cash flow, 
and Eddie corrects me all the time, but I always go, yeah, cash flow is real estate, right? Because if you buy a piece of property, you put 20% down on a million dollar piece of property, you get certain benefits like a mortgage interest write-off, you get the cash flow from the rent versus mortgage, you get you know, the appreciation potential, but you also get to depreciate that asset, right? So that gives you a tax savings and cash flow. Now, what Eddie likes to talk about, especially during recessions right now, inflation recession, is that, wait a minute, people can consult for equity in businesses. And guess what? Businesses have values in their email list. They have value in their contact list, separate from the email list. They have value in whatever their Facebook page is, whatever their business Facebook page is. And this is something that you could begin to acquire with no money out of pocket and still receive cash flow. Longer story, different conversation, but just to put that in your head, that's what that looks like. You could talk to us later about that. Uh, don't forget to go ahead and click that link below if you have any questions. We'd love to answer that specifically. But with that being said, a cash flow mindset is rooted in abundance and recognizes that leverage creates wealth when there's a cash flow safety net, right? That's where the power is. Now, people who have a cash flow mindset understand the velocity of money, and they know that a penny spent can earn three pennies. This is often the fastest way to wealth. How do you get multiple use of each and every dollar, which we're going to get into? And that's where the banks, through fractional reserve lending and or velocity money multiplier, really begin to dominate because they don't take financial risk. They just, they just take credit risk. So, folks, check it out. Right now, our company's credit card, America, America's a company, don't be confused, is $31 trillion. They're in, we're in debt $31 trillion. I want to let that land. It's, well, it's actually 30.8, but it's approaching 31 trillion. So if we talk about a country's velocity and why it's important to keep the money in motion, because we have some steep hills that we have to climb in the future. Anyway, the velocity of money is a measurement of the rate at which money is exchanged in an economy. Typically, a higher velocity is a healthier economy. To calculate the velocity of money in a country, divide the GDP by the total money supply. So folks, check it out. If you look at our current ratio in that scenario, it's about 1.20. Before COVID, it was about 5.20. So the lower it gets, the more risk we are at economically if things don't change. And if this recession slash inflation stays with us, it could become a nightmare as time goes on. Simply put, our national output is diminishing relative to the, to the money that's in the system. And that, folks, go talk to all your people, is a major concern. So we're gonna talk a little bit about personal velocity for you, the individual, for you, the person that's watching this video, and thank you for checking us out. When it comes to personal velocity, what is your, first of all, what are your goals and objectives, and what is your economic philosophy? What does that look like? What was handed down to you? What were some of the mistakes that you made in the past that kind of got you scared a little bit, and or, what are your successes that no one's saying, brother, sister, double, triple down because it's game time. We are in economic winter and this is where it all changes, but check it out. In your own personal finances, it can be calculated by the value you derive from each and every dollar. And remember, velocity is created by value creation and exchange. So each movement of your money should create a new source of revenue, usually through the purchasing of assets. So check it out, I know a guy and his wife, what they did from 2016 to 2019, or 2017 and 2019, between all their different policies and other areas, they, they not only leveraged, but borrowed up to a million six to get their business model to where it is today, um, which in this year, it's gonna approach eight figures. And by the way, I'm talking revenues, but when you talk to CFOs or CEOs, they're gonna say, yeah, 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 but what's the expenses? And what I can tell you, is the expenses versus the revenues is insanely low based on what's happening. Um, I know this because even when I talk to that person today, because everything is about improving, they now know that what took them two and a half years can now take 12 years and less money out of pocket because everything's a formula. And you wanna know why I want, you wanna know, and you wanna know why I know that? Because it's me and my wife, straight up. And at the end of the day, if I'm explaining leverage, liquidity, and control, formula, process, system, being prepared for economic winter, getting yourself around people that you don't know that, that have what you have or have what you want and can show you the map. And if you follow the map, 
make mistakes along the way, but stay true to the outcome. It's not about us approaching eight figures. It's about us being able to educate as many people as we can over and over again, rinsing, repeating, contributing and growing, contributing and growing. That's the formula. And that's part of how we utilize the velocity of money multiplier in our favor. Now listen, I'm not saying this is for you because I know there's a lot of people out there that you know, what, they were crushing it in Bitcoin and they were crushing it in the stock market and they were saying we could leverage the stock market. Um, however, if you sort of leverage it in last year and January of this year up until yesterday, you're in trouble. But with that being said, we love using life insurance as the baseline. Then the conversation goes from is it IUL versus whole life? And well, I think the IULites, no different than the kryptonites. There's a little bit of a struggle going on right now. There's a little bit of happy feet. You ever see a quarterback go back and then happy feet when the blitz is coming? There's a little bit of happy feet going on because that cost of insurance is going up. Anyway, we like to overfund cash value life insurance. From there, we want to say leverage it once you do your homework with all your financial professionals, accountants, attorneys included, and either go buy real estate, go get in that investment business, or whatever you want to do to velocitize your own money. And it becomes a rinse and repeat model because you still got to save every month, right? You got to save. Accumulation and savings are two different things. And as you save and it grows and grows and grows, you can either buy more businesses, you could buy more property, and the cash flow goes back into your policy, which is your bank in this scenario. And this is what we talk about, a nice little visual of how to increase your money's velocity. So check it out, folks. Here's a personal philosophy. Everyone's vision of financial freedom looks a little bit different. If freedom to you means having no loans, then work to get out of debt. If freedom means having the cash flow, to pay off your owns, then leverage the debt. But check it out, here's the bottom line, ready? So to me, what financial freedom is, is to be able to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, how you want, without any money or time constraints. Now that looks different for the guy or gal in Utah versus the guy or gal in New Jersey for many different reasons. Um, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to what is your monthly money supply? What is your monthly expenses? And what is your contributions to the world that's helping make the world a better place where you're, cons you're consistently contributing and giving as you grow and the folks that get into that space not only achieve fulfillment and happiness um, and they don't get there first and then the happiness comes in, it's along the way because it's been our experience that if you're helping people and you're serving people, what will begin to happen is you will become somebody that has an impact on the world that helps make the world a better place. So what does this have to do with investing, or what does it have to do with life insurance, or what does it have to do with velocity money multiplier? Well, I think that if you have an abundant mindset, which there's tools, technologies, and strategies on how to reprogram your brain to get there, um, I think what will happen, just based on you know, the evidence of the things I've seen over the last 50 years, um, what will begin to happen is you'll put yourself in a position to really feel like what it would be like if money didn't exist and be happy and be fulfilled. Because I think at the end of the day, if you could say, if money wasn't a factor, what do I want to do? And then re-engineer that back into what you're doing today, you could find a place that puts you in a, in, in, in a positive cash flow mindset and allows you to make decisions that creates generational wealth. Anyway, thanks for checking us out. Go ahead and click that link below. We're always here dropping nuggets on a daily basis, information, education. We want to continue to serve you. If you have any videos you want us to do, add it in the comment section. Um, and at the end of the day, we also have some other links below, whether it's an annuity link, a financial freedom map link. It's all there for you to give you what you need to help make good decisions. But at the end of the day, no matter who you work with and what you do, make sure your professionals are on the same page. Uh, once again, go ahead, like, follow. When you hear that bell, um, we're here to bring that next message. And thank you so much and continue to share our information.